אבינו מלכנו, אבינו מלכנו, אבינו מלכנו, חוננו בנינו, כי אין בנו מעשים. עשה עמנו צדקה וחסד, עשה עמנו צדקה וחסד. Abinu Malkein is one of the most powerful prayers of the High Holidays, our Father, our King, and then we go with a series of petitions, our Father and our King, we have sinned against you, our Father, our King, inscribe us in the Book of Redemption, in the Book of Goodness, in the Book of Forgiveness, act for your sake, Abinu Malkeinu, if not for ours, and it brings wonderful memories uh, from childhood, from synagogue life, from high holidays, but um, the, the question is why? What is so special about Abinu Malkeinu? And I think it's about this particular combination between our father and our king, this dual relationship in which most of us uh, are, were taught, probably in school, in religious school, of having this idea of God as a, as a king, as a powerful king, as a king imparting justice and um, deciding the destiny of each of us. And part of that imagery is, is right and is also in, in our Mahzorim, in our Sidurim, the idea of God as a Melech, as a king. But the idea of God as a father, as an Abba, the Abinu part of the Abinu Malkeinu is one that we don't talk too much. Some of us may, um, may think that it's even Christian because of the Our Father uh, prayer, uh, but it is, as, as you can imagine, uh, this idea of God as a father, a very Jewish one. Um, and it is Christian, of course, is because Christianity is, uh, comes from, uh, from Jewish uh, sources as well. So it's an idea that was prevalent uh, already many, many years ago, over 2,000 years ago, the idea that God uh, is our Father, that God is compassionate, that God is close to us. And the source of Abinu Malkeinu is found in the Talmud, in Tractate Ta'anit 25b. And I would like to tell you the story. Some of you uh, may know it or may remember it. It once happened that Rabbi Eliezer ben Orkenus proclaimed 13 fasts on the community, but no rain fell. After the final fast, the people began to leave the synagogue. And then, of course, Rabbi Eliezer um, um, said to them, are you ready to uh, prepare grace for yourself, we are all going to die, people start crying, and then rains fell. And on another opportunity, Rabbi Eliezer ben Orkanus went down before the ark uh, in the capacity of the Sheliach Tzibur to lead the congregation in prayer and say a special Amidah of 24 blessings. We have our Amidah has now 19. He uh, said 24 blessings, but he was not answered, and rain did not fall. Rabbi Akiva went down before the ark after Rabbi Eliezer ben Ergorkanos. He says, basically, let me try to do something different. And he said, he prayed, Our father, our king, Abinu Malkein, we have no king but you. Our father, our king, for your sake, have compassion on us. And rains fell. The fact that he was able to move the prayer from a more, uh, I would say, formal and structured prayer to the one that came from the heart and saying to God, Abinu Malkeinu, our Father, our King, have compassion on us. That's what opened the channels from heaven and the channels for, uh, for, um, for blessing. So the first uh, point I would like to make to you and I like to stress for this coming holidays is that it's very important for us to recover this personal relationship with God. If anything good is going to happen to our spiritual life, it's going to come from 
feeling that God is close to us. Uh, part of that is recovering the language of Abba, the, the language of Father, the language of God, uh, as someone who is very, very close to us, the way a father uh, is close to, to a child. And I, of course, we use father, the, the, you, I guess we could use mother as well, and the terminology of mother maybe is more familiar in the Kabbalistic system, while in our Siddur, in our Mahzorim, we keep the one, the, the, the masculine one. But this relationship, this close relationship, is very, very important to recover and to talk to God like the way we are going, to, or we can talk to our Father. The last point about Avinu Malkeinu is the end of the story. After uh, Rabbi Akiva was successful in his prayer, people started speaking poorly about Rabbi Eliezer, the great rabbi before, who did not succeed in his prayer. And um, the story tells us that the heavenly voice um, went forth and declared, not because Rabbi Akiva is greater than Rabbi Eliezer, he was answered, but because Rabbi Akiva is a forgiving person. And this, in my opinion, is one of the most beautiful stories in the Talmud. The story is telling us that Rabbi Akiva was answered first, was answered first because he was able to keep his prayer simple and to be able to relate to God as a father, but also because he himself was a forgiving person. And I think this story is telling us one of the most beautiful secrets of our approach to God and our seeking forgiveness. You want God to forgive you, and we say, yes, I want God to forgive me. I want to be forgiven. The secret is be forgiving yourself. You cannot ask God to forgive you if you cannot forgive. You cannot ask God to let go if you yourself cannot let go. So it's very important that when we approach these high holidays, may they come with blessings and only good things for all of us, that we come to God like this, with open hands, with a forgiving attitude towards other people who may have done the wrong thing to us in the past. And we can say to them, I forgive you. And because of that, I feel I have the right to come, so to speak, in front of God and say, God, I just forgave those who hurt me. Now I come to you and ask you to forgive me as well. I just let go, please let go, and grant me a good, sweet, and blessed year. Le Shanato Vatikatebu, and many blessings to all of you and your loved ones.